Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I am here with The Legend of Korra book 3 episode number 9 and 10 reaction. Okay, the previous episode, um, we had uh, Tenzin trying to um, teach the new airbenders uh, about the history and everything and you know they were not happy with it. Most of them, uh, especially Bumi and you know Bumi kind of gave him an idea later on where Tenzin asked him that yeah like go all out you know like kind of like you know, do what the army does like you know break the people down to build them back up and oh boy he got himself into a mess when Tenzin started doing that Boomi was like nah I'm too old for this but you know like you know there was like this kind of a spark going on between the students and Tenzin because Tenzin was so like you know Tenzin is so serious about these type of things so you know like um, that was happening and um um Jinora gets Jinora and um what's his name Kai you know they go to see some baby bisons get captured by uh, some poachers or bison rustlers I think that they, that's what they call them and by the end of it you know like um Bumi took control of all the like you know the people and like you know, as a leader he led them and Tenzin also went and saved all of them uh Kai and um Jinora so yeah, by the end of it, everything will go goes well. Tenzin and um, Bumi comes to an understanding with each other, each other, and it's nice, you know, like like the the whole part kind of goes down. While the next episode, Korra almost gets kidnapped, um, and I was impressed by the way the guards and everyone fought. You know, they actually kept. Um, all of the, the like you know the, the kidnappers like you know uh zahir and all his people away and were able to bring Korra back i was impressed by that and by the end of it we were able to realize that ai uh was a traitor and uh, he gets out you know runs away and suin tells Korra that i'll keep um lin and like you know like keep lin calmed down you go and bring him back to me because i have something to talk with him and uh, yeah like suyin was obviously very shocked after hearing of the betrayal because obviously like Iwe was uh, one of his her people and like you know like the person who she trusted like just betrayed her like that so yeah she like you know i'm, I'm guessing uh gora is going to probably try to bring Iwe back and uh, we'll see what happens after that so yeah let's get started this is episode number nine of the legend of korra book three so i'll put in subtitles and the timer here think it whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go <clears throat> then becomes a hunter. All right. The stakeout. Ooh. Wow, that's some interesting birds. Okay. <laughs> Naga. Okay, this place. Whoa. Okay, calm down. Wait. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh my God, yo. Okay, I think you should get get out of here. Like you have wanted posters, literally, in front of you. Yeah, wrong. <laughs> she did that thing that Katara did, you know, like in season one. 
Ah. Ah. Oh. Okay, yeah. Exactly, like. Oh, I guess. Yeah, they're a long way from the from Zhao Fu, so it'll take time for Lin to catch up with them. Okay. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> Pat her. <laughs> ah, Naga's like, how dare you? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Good idea. Ooh, knock duck. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> no, you're you're standing more out. <laughs> Ivy. Okay. You're and that's suspicious. Yeah, that that's kind of mysterious and nice. I feel like they're standing out more. Oh, look at those spirits. What the? Is that a frozen? <laughs> oh boy. Oh. Wait, why would he come here for a drink? Oh, <laughs> poor guy. Hmm. <laughs> mm. Oh, okay. Okay, then we should call them back, Bolin and... Um... Oh, hello there. Eh... Okay, why are you putting it in your mouth? What the? Oh my god. Um... I... Uh... Oh! Yo! Highway! He really is here. <laughs> ting ting. He doesn't even realize that like, he's being tailed. Okay. Um. Yeah. 
No. Oh my god, you're losing your you kind of forgetting your purpose. You're supposed to get Iwi and get out of here. Not go meet with Zahir. That's a whole big problem in itself. <laughs> wow. Uh. Oh no. Uh. Oh, wait, what? That's why she was here? <laughs> That's why they were following him. Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay. Yeah. Ah, look at that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> now I got just He looks really meek. Like, <laughs> that's the reality. <laughs> what the? Oh, what's that? Yo, is this the lotus? White lotus? Lotuses? Yeah. <laughs> Five showdown, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, is he really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What the? What? Ah, there you go. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. Ah, uh, you lost. Great. But three out of oh, okay. Bob. Hmm. <laughs> They're still playing. How can did he win? Might. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh no, there's a 
I feel like there's like a transmitter inside it or something. Oh, never mind. I, I went, okay, never mind. Oh yeah, this is the avatar. Like, how can there be a transmitter? Okay. I feel like that was a dummy. Like, there you go. I told you, like, this is probably not Iway. He looks too meek. No, wait. Is that really Iway? Oh. Oh, it is. Okay, it is Iway. Okay, never mind. Just sitting down in front of him. <laughs> okay, wow. Okay, calm down. Remember Mar what Marco said. Yeah. Hmm. Oh boy. Ah! Oh my god. Wait, what happens if you die in the spirit world? Oh, that's the fog of the lost souls. Oh my god. Hmm. That's problematic. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Freedom. Red Lotus? No, I don't... Oh. Oh. Red Lotus. Yeah, why are you... Unalak? Oh my god, this guy again. I, I hated him in season 2. Oh no! This guy is insane! Even in this, oh my god, his physical body can. Okay. Yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah. Damn, like, Unalox is full of bullcrap, but this guy, I feel like he's genuinely, like, <laughs> warm. Okay, Cora. Okay. Oh, no. We need to defend her. 
Fuck. Oh no. Run! Oh, nice. Oh my god, the lava again. Oh, this is a very troublesome bending method. Oh. Oh my god. Yeah, one of those is is piece of crap. But in his his way or in the red lotus's way. Oh. What? Oh, wait. oh my god. Yeah, but that's that's like extreme. Yeah. Oh my god. Guru Lahima? Yeah. Who is it, Lahima? We're hearing a lot about him. Oh my god, these guys are too strong. Yeah, this is just... Like, he's using lava. <laughs> I don't think it'll work if they trade. Oh! Uh, it would have it would've, it would've been amazing if Bowling could metal bend, you know? Like he's trying to learn, but he's still not there. Oh! Oh my god. Oh yeah, she can just waterbend him out of there. <laughs> Bolin, you made a mistake. Ah. Uh. God damn. Oh my god. What now? <sighs> He's just keeping her here, wasting time. Uh. Yeah. Come on, Cora, wake up. Wake up. Oh god, he, she, she, I think she's probably already captured. Yeah, great. Damn, this Zahir is just Yeah, he was just keeping her there. Oh yeah, she doesn't know. What? The Earth Queen? Wait, they're working together? Oh, oh no. 
no, they're not working together. Oh, but now, oh my god, they're going to exchange them or do whatever the hell. Okay. Oh, god. Well, that was, um... Alright, so this episode, it starts... Yeah, it starts with, oh my god, like, we... <laughs> We went to get Iway back, and yeah, like look at the mess we got our ourselves into. <clears throat> Alright, it starts with uh, the Korra's team chasing down, uh, trying to chase down Iway. They get to a bar where there's like wanted posters all over. <laughs> the Earth Queen, the uh, Earth Queen is just yeah, she is ready to get them. Ah, now. Good thing Lin was able to realize that they have gone, you know, like, and I'm guessing Lin is probably will try to follow us. Hopefully, like, she's able to track us down. And I don't know what she's going to do if she's able to track us down. Whether she'll go try to get more reinforcements or barge in herself. I think taking reinforcements and then arriving is a better idea because the earth queen has captured us so obviously the earth queen will have her own army and uh, we need an army or at least a few people to do something about this situation like i don't think yilin herself is enough for this i don't know we'll see but okay um we track down iway's uh car and uh, there's like a little um oasis kind of like you know like a, a place like a little village kind of in the middle of the desert and our team plans to uh, bolin and mapo will go to that place find out more uh, you know like information while Cora and asami they're going to stay there so Oh my god, <laughs> so this guy was hilarious, like a <laughs> bright yellow <laughs> coat or whatever. <laughs> and it's nice to see like, you know, the spirit is just hanging around, which kind of shows that, yeah, change has happened after that, you know. Like now the like, spirits are just like a part of the human, uh, you know, like world and they're just chilling around, just, <laughs> like, just hanging around and everything. And people are also, I'm guessing, getting um accustomed to it because you know like uh, we see that uh, one guy uh in the in the diner was sweeping it's like oh this place is for like you know human customers only it just sweeps them out <laughs> like this, this is like you know it's like so such a normal scene now he's like yep it's like just an like you know everyday uh, occurrence now like you know like spirits just sneak in and <laughs> something like that and uh yeah okay so he they asked the guy about Iway, and Iway was actually here and uh, not was but is still actually here and they get to know that while Korra and Asami Asami finds out a piece of paper where it's written where they will meet okay where is that place that they the name of the place um Zai what Zaibao Zaibao's Grove and when they were talking about it like <laughs> it's not like you know like it's interesting to see to see the spirits are always trying trying to help you know we since we are unable to understand what they say or whatever we don't realize it like you know the spirit comes in the spirit was probably like you know like watching Korra and Asami like talking about Zaibao's Grove and them trying to find it out and the spirit was like you know what let's let me just tell them that yeah the zaibao's grove is not here it's in the spirit world <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> they did not realize that and just shoot them away so mm, yeah it would be nice if like you know like it's spirits we would if we are able to understand what spirits were telling um i guess a few people are able to say tell what they're telling for example um Jinora can do that, I think, kind of. Um, Bumi also can kind of do it, but I don't know if it's 
only for Bumju or it's for all the spirits because he's able to understand what they are telling and he's not able to he doesn't know their language but he's able to feel what they're telling so I'm not sure if that's solely for Bumju or it's for all the other spirits but I can like, we've seen Bumi do this as well um something like that okay so while on the other side uh Bolin and Mako they are just trying to find uh, Ai Wei while, oh boy, uh, two people who looks like bounty hunters track them and <laughs> start following them and they're like, oh, trying to run away. Um, later on, however, we do get to know they're not bounty hunters, so. <laughs> okay, now Ai Wei is just walking around on the street. I think he probably didn't even think that Korra would actually come and track him down over here. Like he was probably just like ah like it's okay i was not being followed or anything and uh <laughs> like yeah he let his guard down and like at first i i was really here's like you know few things were kind of going in on my head the first thing uh that was uh, like you know that i thought was this i way is not the same i way i thought maybe it was like a person who looked similar to i way because the way he was kind of behaving like in a, like in a very meek manner I was like, is this really that uh, same Ai Wei? You know, like he was just looking down kind of, like, you know, kind of concerned. I guess he was kind of concerned whether Korra is like tracking him or not. That's probably why he was just so worried. But I really thought that was not Ai Wei. I thought maybe that was someone who just looks like Ai Wei or something. But yeah, uh, anyways, um, we find out where he is. Uh, Bumi and... Um, Mako, they go and tell Korra and Asami about it and uh, yeah, we come to a place to stake out. Now Mako is very like, you know, what can I say, uh, accustomed to these type of situations, obviously because he's a police and he had a good plan. Unfortunately, by the end of it, Korra wasn't able to carry that out. I feel like if Korra actually listened to what um, Mako said and did not come out and give away her you know that she was there you know in in the spirit world i feel like none of this would have happened you know he, he she should have just listened in on them and just went away her coming out giving out his uh, uh up her cover ah uh, that was a mistake like yeah damn anyways um marco's plan was to take out the room you know like follow him find zahir and get to know what they're doing and then decide what to do from here onwards um so that was a good plan you know like and uh, that's why they came to like the room the hotel room in front of uh Iway's place <laughs> and they were like can you give us a room this place specifically this room specifically <laughs> The innkeeper was like, nah, there's some kids coming around trashing the whole place. I don't, like, you know, I, I won't allow it. But then in comes those two bounty hunters who we thought we were bounty hunters. And they're like, oh, we're big fans. Now here at this point, I was still suspicious of them, you know. I felt like they were actually, you know, trying to let their, like, you know, let Korra's team's guard down and do something, you know. And, uh, like... I was still suspicious, but the, the 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 girl was like a genuine fan. She's like, oh, can you give me an autograph? Oh, I made a little doll for you. And here again, you know, like the doll. I don't know why I was suspicious of the doll. <laughs> like, oh my god, I'm I'm, I'm too paranoid. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I'll tell you what I was suspicious about the doll. <laughs> uh, uh, for the doll, you know, like about why was I suspicious, like. Um, okay, so first of all, um, they get into that room. They're taking out that that outside the, the room across it where Ai Wei is, and Ai Wei is there. We see he's there, just uh, looking outside, being kind of paranoid. And seeing him like that, I thought I I really thought that was not the actual Ai Wei. That was some other person or something. Uh, well, no, I was wrong. However. All right, uh, they're just sitting there and Bolin's like, oh, I thought this was going to be so exciting. What is this? Just boring. And he and, um, what's his, her name? Um, uh, Asami starts playing um, Paisho. And 
Oh my god, whenever I see like you know Paisho, Paisho board, I always think of White Lotus. So I thought at that moment I thought, wait, isn't this like somehow related to White Lotus? But then I'm I'm like, you know, it's just a normal game of Paisho. <clears throat> so okay, they start playing. <laughs> Bolin was kind of bragging, like I you know I, I learned from what Shady Shin, I think that's what it is. <laughs> Shady Shin, I'm one of the best. And Asami's like, yeah, I've learned from my dad. <laughs> And they start playing, and uh, ah, Bolin was just so frustrated with you know the uh, like you know the, the variations of the game or whatever, like you know how it changes the, according to the culture. So she talks to Korra about changing the rules after she <laughs> uh, after like you know like she becomes what did she say like standardized. Yeah, you need to standardize these Paisho rules. And okay, so here we just are sitting down here, not sitting down, but just keeping an eye on um, Ai Wei. Ai Wei is sometimes coming out, sometimes going back, and for a long moment he doesn't come out. It's I think it was like a complete half a day or something. They were just sitting down there, mm, and <laughs> Bullying constantly loses. Sam is winning all the time. The one time that he was almost going to win, Pabu just messes everything up. All right, so Korra's like, you know what? Enough is enough. Let's just go barge in. And they go in and see that he's meditating. And again, here I thought this was not the actual highway. But then it turns out it is the actual highway. He is just meditating and the place uh, that they were supposed to meet is in the spirit world. So Korra goes into the spirit world and they are supposed to protect her by that you know, during that time. And here's where, oh, another thing, uh, the doll, which I was saying, like, and I was suspicious of the doll because while they were like, you know, messing with the stuff and Pabu and all, the doll's head comes off and, <laughs> you know, like, um, this is like one mistake I made. I forgot that this is actually the legend of Korra, like where a lot of things are actually kind of like you know like has not been invented or something like transmitters and stuff or gps so <laughs> i thought <laughs> i thought inside the doll was a transmitter or something <laughs> like they were all listening to them all along and you know like planning what they're going to do after listening to that or something i thought it was i was still suspicious of those two and when the head came out i was like oh my god a transmitter chip is going to come out or something and then i realized like wait a minute this is the legend of Korra. This is not some modern like you know like um, <laughs> like you know like shows happening in the modern day world so i was like yeah like scratch that like there's no transmitter in it it might be a voodoo doll we don't know about that but um yeah there's definitely no transmitter in it and i guess if it was a voodoo doll when the head came off <laughs> if it was actually a voodoo doll um uh, what's his name bolin bolin would probably die but he's still alive, so it's probably just a normal doll. I don't know why I was so suspicious of the doll. But yeah, never mind. Alright, Korra goes into the spirit world. Oh boy, Ai Wei and Zahir is meeting. And Ai Wei is like, oh, um, like I'm here in the Misty Palm Sen. Like, you know, there's that. I've not been followed. The same. And uh, Zahir is like, oh, you left a loose end. Uh, you know, like, and... Okay, he, he tries to get him, I guess that's why Korra came out, you know, uh, because he was going to do something to Ai Wei, but I feel like if, like, you know, she actually did what Marco told her to, and did not give, give, oh, give away her position, nothing of, like this would have happened, but as I said, like, it's probably because the, if Zahir grabbed Ai Wei, she thought something, she was, he was going to do something to him. Uh, which unfortunately she wasn't able to stop because Zahir got to get to know gets to know that Korra is here and Zahir just teleports out of that place to somewhere else and just throws Ai Wei into the land of Fox so either way it wouldn't have worked Ai Wei was going to be I like, you know, like compromised by the end of it but I don't know like his body is still there maybe if you're able to save him from the land of uh, Fox He'll, he'll probably come back but uh here's the thing you know like i feel like suin uh, is going to try to 
help him out. Because he, she did say that I want to talk to him face to face. So I don't know what's going to happen here, but you know, like maybe I will come back later on. But that's for later on, I guess. Like for now, there's like more pressing things to think about. Uh, Zahir starts talking with Koran. A lot of interesting thing comes out here, and Zahir, my God, is an intelligent person, you know, and uh, he is insane. He actually is in the spirit world, but his body outside. He's able to make his body outside speak and tell the location, and you know those two, uh, Gazim, what was his name? Something like that, and. Ah, I forgot the name of the girl, the the water girl. Uh, you know, like both of them goes to the misty palm in or whatever, while the other girl uh flee or fl uh, flew something like that. The one who uh, like, you know uses mind to use fire to firebend or something. No, not firebend. Sorry, to do explosions. She was with like and was going to stay with Zahir because if something happens. So, yeah, and Zahid starts talking with Kora. Um, obviously, she was doing that to waste her time so she doesn't go back to the original world. And at the same time, we do get a lot of our answers. First of all, uh, this all started when uh, Unalak, you know, like when Unalak was also part of the Red Lotus. And their goal, the Red World Lotus's goal, was to be what the White Lotus wasn't able to be. Like, the white lotus like in avatar we saw like the white lotus were insane they were just so good you know like with um uh, what's his name um uh, iroh uh and and the others i forgot all of their names you know uh like um sokka's um master and you know all the other like you know old men that were there in it uh they oh uh Boone was also part of it wasn't he yeah i think so like you know like all of them just were so so good and they they were like you know they they handled the whole thing so well and i obviously i guess they all retired or something and probably like a new generation came and they probably messed everything up or did something as uh like you know um zahid said that white lotus ended up becoming just uh like you know glorified bodyguard for the avatar where like you know like they started becoming greedy and just started like, you know just going up and like you know teaming up with which who whichever like you know country or whichever place gave them more money and like you know it, it just became a mess and that's why we made the red lotus which are going to do this thing that the white lotus were supposed to do and we will change the world so what their actual plan here is as far as i could understand is uh they wanted like you know like like they wanted the spirit world and the human world to be the you know like all the same and they wanted to completely destroy the whole thing about leaders and everything like you know like uh, what he says here kind of interesting like okay like let's go one by one um the thing that at first that he says is unola betrayed them not betrayed as per se but just bailed out when he saw that uh, they were in trouble they got captured and unalak became tried to become the dark avatar unalak was a piece of crap we all know that and in season two i really hated him and i still hate him and uh, yeah but here uh you know like zahir is an interesting type of a person like, you know he, the things that he is saying are i don't feel like you know annoyed or like you know angry at him like the way i felt about unalak like I hated Unalak, but Zahir, I cannot do that. Like, I, I feel like this is like a villain done right, you know? Like, he just has his own goals, which kind of is like something that, like, you know, falls in the wrong path. And he, like, you know, like, Zahir and his crew, they are definitely the antagonists, but at the same time, they are, you can ask people, they're genuine. Unlike that Unalak who just backstabs people, manipulates people and does whatever the hell he wants to uh, for his own selfish goals. So there's, there's a difference, I guess, between these guys and Unalak. That's why I hated Unalak, but I don't hate these people here. Um, obviously, they're villains. We need to stop them. But that doesn't mean I hate them. So what Zahir says here is, um, 
okay to restore balance in the world uh okay he says why stop like I mean, at first he says like uh Juan did a wrong thing when he like you know just stopped the battle between uh you know uh, Vatu and Rava like you know like making the everything go out of control and like we know the story and that was his mistake obviously I agree but at that moment he knew nothing so that was a what can I say that was a mistake that you cannot do anything about you cannot blame him for it because he didn't know what he was doing he just saw that two spirits were fighting and one like you know and uh, like you know Vatu like acted as a victim so he helped him out which kind of came back biting him in the back later on so but the thing that he says after that is like he made another mistake which I also kind of agree in a certain extent you know by dividing the spirit world and like you know kind of just not letting them mix you know like the spirit world and the human world he just closed the portals which I also think was at a certain extent a mistake and uh, Korra did correct that thing you know like he she did like you know open the spirit world which kind of had its own problems but at the same time um I think this was a positive thing that you know came out of the whole of season two so um, Zahid says why stop there and here's what he says bringing the spirits back should only be the beginning the idea of having nations and governments is as foolish as keeping the human and the spirits realm separate and he talks about how like you know uh, like you know like Raiko is an idiot and um, uh, the earth queen is just a selfish little prick and yeah like he says like how would the world like you know positively progress if those type of leaders were eliminated um i do agree at a certain extent i do want the earth queen to be eliminated uh but i don't feel the same way about raiku raiku is is an idiot but that doesn't mean he needs to be eliminated uh, the earth queen however i don't like her at all she is like the worst trash i could say like you know he's just selfish like she's she's she's, she's crazy you know she she doesn't even think about it she thinks only about herself unlike raiku i guess has tries to think of his people but at the same time he's he's stupid he's an idiot like you know the decisions he take are are really idiotic and uh, like but i don't think raiku like you know needs to be eliminated like that is going too far but i do want the earth queen to be like you know like yeah like she wants she needs to go down uh so here's the thing i can understand what Zahir is trying to say he's saying that yeah government's leaders they should be just eliminated and uh you know like okay um and i don't know what he plans to do after that but his, his the start of his goal is eliminating the world leaders and everything um Korra, as as like you know as i said Cora said that this is going too extreme you know we cannot do that obviously we'll just be throwing the world into chaos you know like wars will start and everything it'll be a mess and zahid says like new growth cannot exist without first destroying the old and this is oh my god here we go new growth cannot exist without first the destruction of the old the wise guru lahima and airbender said this now i do wonder who is this guru lahima he is like one of the most i feel like like the person who made the most influence on him he keeps talking about guru lahima i don't even know who that guy is and i don't know you know like ah like uh, like this thing that he says like you know like uh like you know like changing the world can only be done when like you know uh you know, with the destruction of the old or something it does apply to a few things but that doesn't mean we need to destroy like you know like he's basically saying that destroy all tradition like and embrace the new world or something like that which i feel like some of the traditional stuff which are actually negative that definitely needs to be stopped you know but there's a lot of positive things that a lot a lot of people did in like you know in the older days which are like you know like tradition and i feel like those should definitely be 
uh, you know, like we should definitely follow them and like, you know, like as I said, like you know, people should embrace what is good. You know, it doesn't matter when it came, where it came from. Was it like you know, old or is it new? Like, you know, we should pick up the good things and like you know, just deny the bad things. So him just saying that oh, old equal bad, new equal good, that is not correct at all. Like I can understand what he's trying to say. Like he's trying to say like you know, destroying the world would usher the world into old, would usher the world into a new age where we can make some positive changes. But no, that's not how it goes. You know, like like old is equal to not bad. You know, there's definitely a lot of like you know, wrong things or things that we should not do that are. Like, you know obviously like you know a lot of things in the past a lot of people did a lot of mistakes we should not obviously not do that but the good things we should pick up from them while in the new world or whatever he's saying we should again try to do something positive so his whole point of view of destroying the old to make a new world and like you know i, I feel like that's flawed that's flawed that's a flawed argument it's uh, so obviously that cannot be allowed and as I said, he's going too extreme. He's talking about plunging the world into chaos, you know, to destroy the, like, you know, like the old and like, you know, from the ashes of that, making a new world. This is too extreme. Now, yeah, obviously, like, Korra wouldn't agree to Korra's like, what the hell are you saying? You know, like, and then by the end of it, he's like, oh, and on the other side, like, you know, uh, the, the two, the benders, the water bender and the lava bender, they come in. Um, Marco and Bolin try to stop them while Asami, Naga and Korra get out of there <coughs> and oh boy these two are too strong yeah Bolin and Marco aren't able to do anything uh, and yeah they, get, they just get like, you know, knocked out and captured I thought Korra and Asami were captured by them unfortunately it was the earth queen who captured them and, you know, like soldiers on on them or something so obviously Zahid thought that uh, Korra has been you know captured by his friends so he's like oh like uh, when you're going to wake up like you know like my friends will be there and he gets out of that place and when he comes to the real world uh, he realizes that Korra has not been captured the Earth Queen has captured her while Marco and Bolin are with them while Korra has been captured by the Earth Queen. And then what he says is like, all right then, uh, let's go to Ba Sing Se. Uh, they have Bolin and Mako with him. So I'm guessing they'll try to, I don't know, like exchange or, you know, um, yeah, I think that's what they're trying to do. Like they'll probably say like, oh, you can have Mako, Bolin and Asami. Uh, you, you need to give Korra to us. Now, I'm not sure what the Earth Queen will do here. I feel like the Earth Queen is, yeah, would not allow, like, you know, she'd be like, no, I'm not going to give Korra, something like that is going to happen. We we'll see, you know, like, we'll, we'll have to wait for it. Okay, so let's start the next episode. I'm guessing we're going to get more answers to this. And uh, yeah, so this is episode number 10 of The Legend of Korra book three so i'll put in the subtitles and the timer here think it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go hmm Hmm. Oh, you know what I realized? That's why they were waiting for Raiko to eliminate him. Long leave the queen. What? <laughs> okay. Yeah? 
Oh, okay. When they're going to come for you, then we'll see who's insane. <laughs> Orders. Hmm. We'll see. What does he, she plan to do? Take the, take the railing out or something? Rocks are fire. Ah! Okay, she can metal bend. She can metal bend Asami out of there. I, I don't know. No. Nah, they want her alive. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Bolin. Oh my god, Bolin. <laughs> Just chatting. Rained. It's true. Bolin is just dog. They're not bad, they're just. Bolin. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Can can she metal bend? Cabbage corp. Cabbage corp. Damn. Yo, this girl. <laughs> What the hell? Oh, okay. She, she can pretend that she is. Oh, oh never mind. Five minutes. Okay. This. Oh my god, I hate her. Mm. God damn. I really hope they eliminate her here and here. Yeah. Well, we. <laughs> yeah. Don't try anything funny. Why do you care? Oh my god, this...
I feel like she's, she'll try to backstab them. Yeah, she, she'll try to backstab them. Like, oh my god. There she is. Nice. Ah! Asami! <laughs> Alright, let's go. <laughs> They're just chilling! Yeah! Sit down! <laughs> well, now. Yeah, this is not future industry stuff, you know. This cabbage corp, yeah, cabbage corp stuff. Oh my god, it just got stuck in. The... <laughs> now I'm in the middle of the desert now. Great. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. Can we stand there? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, will they work together? All right, here we go. Oh, my God. What? I don't know. The sandbenders! Oh my god! Those guys, I think. Oh no, this is spirits. <laughs> yeah, or wait for reinforcements. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Who the? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you <love> this guy. <laughs> oh my god. Calm down. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Bring out your inner nut duck. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Alright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, I hope she reaches them um, and uh, Oh, style marks, nice. All right, here we are. Oh! 
Oh my god! Damn! <laughs> Ah, that was there. <laughs> okay. Hmm. <laughs> okay. All right, it's almost ready, I think. <laughs> okay. All right, there you go. Perfect. Oh my god. Oh no, it's a spirit. Just destroyed the whole thing that we worked upon. Oh my god. What? What is that then? <laughs> Kong! Kong! Damn! Yeah? In this position? Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure the Earth Queen is trying to. Damn. Ooh, nice. They'll try to backstab them, I'm pretty sure. There you go, they know the place where they are now. Great. You guys have amazing security. Oh. Alright. Let's defeat the Earth Queen. Defeat the Earth Queen. I'm waiting for this. Yeah. Ah, shut up. Don't lie. Yeah, what will you do? The guy behind her. Oh yeah, let's see. Let's see what they can do now. Yeah, here you go. I'm actually rooting for them. I want the Earth Queen gone. There you go. Yeah, where's... This lady's an... <laughs> Alright. Just slap her. <laughs> yeah. Bye-bye, Earth Queen. Oh wait, what the hell? Yo! She took the air from her lungs!
Damn, that's a scary. She, she took away the air in her lungs, and oh my god, that's a scary technique. God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Earth Queen was at fault here, not the people who are working for her. Yeah, your queen is no more. Oh boy, this is... Ah... This is a bad idea. Oh, they're gonna break the wall. Oh my god. Mm, okay. Damn. Oh damn, these people are happy. Oh, I guess no one liked the queen. <laughs> what? Wait, what? Oh, Marco. <laughs> He's my hero. It still is. Come on. All right. Nice. Oh wait. No, I I don't think that's I don't think I don't think he did that. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> I'm sorry. Bowling. What? Ugh. There you go. I hope that thing doesn't... Yeah. Let's go. Oh my god, it's, it's gaining... Oh, okay. Did we lose it? No. Oh, I think we did. Ah, uh, oh my. <laughs> we, we, we talked to. Okay, it's been nice. There you go. Oh. All right, I think now it, it's really going to be gone. Yeah. Yep, the Earth Kingdom is just. Oh, this guy's a pirate? Oh. <laughs> Dragon? Wait, what the? Yo! Zuko's here! <laughs> Zuko's here! Where's Zuko? Alright, Pabu's here as well. Uh, not Pabu, sorry, uh, Naga. So, Lin is here. And Zuko, I'm guessing? Oh, there you go! <laughs> Yo! Look at them!
Yeah. I don't think she remembers. Okay, she remembers, okay. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Hmm. Yep, she is down. Exactly, like this was what I was saying, like this is what's going to happen. Like, wow. God damn. Like, it's nice that the Earth Queen is gone, but this doesn't help out the situation. Like, he just, they just gave them freedom, which the people are, wouldn't know what to do with it. Like, they'll just, like, you know, like, all the criminals, they're going to run rampant now. That's what's going to happen. Innocent people are going to die. And, like, I don't know what the hell Zahir expected. Just telling them, oh, you're all free. And, like... Like, genuine good people wouldn't know what to do because they suddenly get the freedom, what they never got. And actual bad people, criminals and actual scum, they, they're going to run free now. They're just, going to just, they're just going to prey upon the, like, you know, people, the good people. The, and and that's, that's what's going to happen and more chaos. So, taking down the Earth Queen was something that was necessary. But then announcing this whole thing and saying that, oh, you're all free, was a, I don't think that's something that, yeah, that's going to help in, in any way. Oh my god. <sighs> like, he could have said that, oh, I am in control now. You know, like, if he said that, nothing like this would have happened. But he just said, like, oh, you're all free, you can do whatever the hell you want to. Like, oh god. All right, so we start with Korra and Asami being captured and them taking, uh, you know, being taken to that airship of the Cabbage Corp, <laughs> not a Future Industries airship. So, yeah, the worksmanship was shoddy, <laughs> which kind of, uh, like, you know, acted in our advantage. <laughs> okay, so uh, Korra and Asami are in the, like, you know, in the cell now. At first, when Asami said, like, oh, can you just you can tie me up to the railing over there i thought he was she was planning for cora to metal bend her out like you know the railing would be metal bended out but then i realized that cora cannot metal bend at that moment because you know like she everything is just stopping like, you know, her face her hands and everything is tied so she cannot metal bend if she could metal bend she would have metal bended you know like her own things like in you know, the old her own um uh, what do you call it the the, the things that were like, you know, constricting her so asami like i was not expecting asami to break that thing down uh but yeah she said you, you should like you know connect uh, like and just tie me to that railing over there and thank god it was cabbage corp <laughs> airship if it was future industries airship eh, they would have probably be still be stuck so <laughs> the cabbage uh, you know, they caught helped helped us out. All right, so next we go to Marco and Bolin. They're they're also been captured, and um, the crew, Zahir and his crew, they are on their way to take them to the Earth Queen. And I love how Bolin just started chatting with them. He's like, "Oh, you guys, like you know, like it's been a long time. You've been like you know." captured haven't you like you know it wasn't it boring and uh, like you know just he starts talking random stuff <laughs> he says that okay i'm going to guess something you were raised by an older sister your mustache grew in when you were 10 and i'm sensing just sensing an unspoken attraction between you two they just look at each other and Gazin is like two out of three, not bad. I wonder which two, you know. I'm pretty sure <laughs> the final one, Bolin was, you know, like you know, right on the money. Um, raised by older sister or mustache grew at ten. Uh, I think it was probably 
Like, you know, the, the correct one was raised by older sister, but I, I don't think his mustache grew at 10. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> you know, like, I, I love that scene. And, like, Marco is like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like, Bol is just having fun talking to them. Oh. Okay, so, on the other hand, uh, Asami, like, I was really not expecting Asami herself to break out of that, uh, you know, rating. She, like, however, like, you know, shoddy craftsmanship the Cabbage Corp stuff are, I feel like it would still be difficult to yank out a piece of metal, you know, which has been screwed in. So, damn, Asami, strong. She's strong as hell. And she just, she yanks it out and then she, like, does, like, an... Like, you know, like a gymnastic, like, you know, thing, uh, like, you know, like, probably like a, uh, like, you know, martial art move or something and brings that whole thing in front of her and is able to get out of the restraints. And then she tries to, like, she's like, you know what, we need actual key to bring you out from the shackle scorer. So just wait a bit, you know, let me go out. You scream that something's happening and then I'll handle everything else uh, when the guards try to, like, you know, peek in. Alright, we go to the Earth Queen, and here we go, the Earth Queen, oh my god, like, uh, the Earth Queen is, uh, Earth Queen is bad, like, you know, like, just, just complete, uh, I don't know, like, he, she, she, she's just, yeah, like, she, she brings Marco and Bolin in, and, uh, talks to Zahir, Zahir, you know, like, uh, <clears throat> says that all right you know what like you know like, you wouldn't want Korra with you because the other countries are going to get on you you know and completely isolate you if that happens so it'll be good if you let us take her away and you get your airbenders and obviously like you know like i doubt um zahir actually planned on giving the airbenders to her because zahir hated uh the leaders and earth queen the earth queen was one of those bad leaders you know so he just like you know took his time and like you know got a little bit of time at that moment and he just planned he was probably planning to like you know end her life by the end of like you know the whole situation so he just they kind of just made up random crap and said that yeah i'm going to help you out and uh, like you know like you just give me the avatar now i i feel like the it's going to probably plan to backstab them but this is Zahir and his crew. So obviously that's impossible. Like you know, like what can uh, the, the like you know the people in Basing say do to these four who actually fought head to head with Korra and his crew and like you know stopped them. These four are insane together. You know, like if I feel like if you isolate them and try to pick them off one by one, it could still be done. But these four together are insane. You know, you, I don't think you can stop them that easily. So. I was pretty sure by the end of it, Zahir is going to bring the Earth Queen down, and that's what happened. <clears throat> okay, so they give uh, Bolin and Marco to the Earth Queen, and they go away. Bolin and Marco is to took to, to the like taken to the cell, and uh, or the dungeon, whatever. And uh, yeah, now over there, Korra screams, "Oh, look! What happened? Look at what happened to my friend!" The guard tries to peek in, and Asami just. <laughs> just knocks him out, takes the key, opens Korra's locks, and like damn, like Asami saved the day completely, like you know, like and the cabbage corp as well, you know, like them making such a shoddy piece of you know like uh, moving junk, <laughs> flying junk was the reason why Asami was able to get out of there. So it worked out in our like you know favor this time. <laughs> And oh my god, they come to the cockpit and just like Akura does a little air bending and the whole thing crashes, you know, like the the steering wheel or whatever. It just breaks down. <laughs> and they like you know kind of ask for reinforcement by the time the plane just crashes into the sand. And thank god it was sand, the, like you know, like the whole thing did not blow up. You know, it was like a soft landing. And uh, yeah, they're all stuck. All the other crew members come out. They're like, like, oh, what the hell? Like, you just knocked me out, the other guy. He just knocked me out on my head. 
and uh, you know like obviously they're not happy about it and here's the thing they are basically people trying to do their job you know like the earth queen told them you do this obviously this is not their intention they are following orders so they're not at wrong here as we see like in the end Zahir also says the same thing that these people are not at not wrong here the earth queen was at wrong these people are just following her because they don't have any other choice and uh, yeah so Gora and Asami are like all right we can get out of here and uh, you know like this we can mend this ship while the captain was like oh we have asked for reinforcements and it's going to come and you're going to stay here up until that time but as soon as he sees the spirit or whatever like you know kind of going around <laughs> the captain changes his mind and he's like you know what all right fix the ship <laughs> as he says it's way above his pay grade <laughs> all this you know nonsense all right oh i loved oh my god the whole interaction in the prison was funny <laughs> a random prisoner beside bolin it's like oh bolin like no like he's like what, what did he say you oh, you you have to help me get out of here and Marco is like, Bolin, you can metal bend us out of here if you try. And the other guy's like, oh, you can metal bend? And everyone's like, yeah, go Bolin, you can do it. Like, everyone tries to like, give him the encouragement. And Bolin is like, you know what? Maybe today is the day that I'm going to shine. And he tries, but he fails, unfortunately. <laughs> oh my god. And everyone's just like, kind of disappointed. They're like, oh. No, yeah, I thought we were going to get out of here. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, um, Lin tracks them down, tracks the car down, and Naga is there, Pabu is there, and Lin is able to find out the truck, and he, she calls um, Tonrak. And I guess that's how Zuko got to know, because Zuko was with Tonrak. So he, she calls Tonrak, and she's like, yeah, we found the car. So it's in front of the sandy. Like, what was that? The wait, what was the name of the place? Sandy Oasis or whatever. I forgot. Any, anyways, never mind. The name of the place. She says, and she's like, "Come here." While on the other side, Asami, Cora are able to get the whole huge airship out of that place and mended it, and it's good as new. Unfortunately, a weird creature, shark type of creature, comes in just chomps it down and it's destroyed <laughs> and now they are like what are we going to do now and the the the, the captain is like oh like just you know like another like you know ship is coming and, and it's on its way <laughs> we'll have to wait but yeah that huge thing is just chomping things around so i feel like you know like uh, yeah it, it wouldn't work if they waited there'd be uh, fish food for that thing i don't know if that's a fish or something else but yeah, it's probably it's probably like a shark or something, <laughs> like a sand shark or something. So by the end of it, the captain is like, "All right, like let's find some metal and let's make a sand glider or the sand thing, whatever it's called." <laughs> and here we go. Ah, this is where everything begins. Uh, Zahir follows the guard and finds out that Cora has been stranded in such such place that place name and he's able to get that information he goes back to his uh, people and tells them that yeah like we know where he she is and we need to get Cora before we like you know before the queen is able to get their hands on her Zahir's like yeah so you know what let's forget about Cora for the moment let's get the earth queen down and I'm I was pretty sure like you know like they were had planned either way to take the earth queen down either it would have been they would get Korra and then took the earth queen down or this you know like their end goal was definitely taking the earth queen down so yeah they just blast through the door and get in and they're like oh we saw like you know we eavesdropped on you and we get to know that yeah like Korra's not coming here <laughs> earth queen obviously is fuming she's like how dare you come unannounced an announced you didn't knock you are disrespecting the earth queen blah 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 like it baffles me how 
uh, what can I say, like how ignorant he is, she is, that she didn't even realize that these people can actually bring, like, you know, them down easily. She, she starts acting all high and mighty. She's like, yeah, get these hoodlums. And they just, just defeat the, uh, like, you know, the people. Like these four, as I said, like, these four are insane together. And they just defeat them, like, you know, in a, in a matter of seconds. The, all the Dai Li or whatever. You know? And uh, the Earth Queen is behind her, her throne. And she's like... <laughs> the secretary or whatever, she, he just runs away. The Earth Queen is like, how dare you run away? And then she comes out, acting again, all high and mighty. She's like, oh, you wouldn't dare lay your hands on me. I'm the Earth Queen. This and that. And Zahir is like, you know what? I hate queens and kings. So yeah, there you go. Oh my god, I feel I felt like he, he was probably going to knock the Earth Queen down, take her prisoner or something. I, I feel like he just straight up killed her. That's what he did, I guess. He took away the air from her lungs and circulated it, made an air pocket so that air from the outside couldn't get in. Like, you know? That's what he did. So basically, he took all the air, made an air pocket so that outside air could get in, and she started suffocating on her own air. Like, imagine suffocating and dying because of the air in your lungs. That's a scary technique. My God. And, oh my God, the thing that he says here is so... Uh, what can I say? Like, so interesting. He says, like, you think freedom is something you can give or take on a whim, but to your people, freedom is just as essential as air. And without it, there's no life. And he just made the Earth Queen realize what it is to take freedom away, I guess, you know, through his analogy. Freedom is like air. And without air, people suffocate. And the Earth Queen was able to get what it is like. It, it feels like to be without air. And she suffocated to death, I think. I'm, I feel, I think she's dead. Like, you know, I'm, I don't know. They didn't, like, you know, confirm whether she died or she lived. But she, she's probably dead. Like, she, she's not here anymore. Like, they, they said, like, we brought down the Earth Queen. They, they don't actually tell whether they killed her or not in the end. But I feel like she's dead. Like, how can someone survive from that? Like, they just choked her to death in that way. And, uh, oh my god. Like, ah, uh, yeah. And as I said, like, you know, the Earth Queen... Uh, I, I would have been happy if she was captured, imprisoned, and, like, you know, just left in jail to rot forever. I feel like that would have been a better punishment for her but yeah i guess nothing you can do about it zahir just you know, judged you know like just delivered judgment on her oh boy so yeah the earth queen is gone i guess now they go to the uh, the thing the walkie the the thing where you like announce her stuff and here Zahid says, like, you know, like, these people are not at fault here. It was the Earth Queen. We are here to save these people. And, like, ironic, he says, save these people, but he actually plunged the whole city into chaos. Like, he said, like, he, he announced, like, oh, the Earth Queen is gone. No more tyranny. You guys are free. I'm not here to rule. So you can do whatever you want to. Which is the thing from here onwards... I, I, I disagree majorly with Zahir. Up until this time, you know, what he was doing, I was like, all right, it's okay. You know, like, he took down the Earth Queen, all well and good. But here, if he did not say this, and if he just announced that I'm here, I took the, down the Earth Queen, I'm in control here, I feel like this chaos wouldn't happen. But what they did was basically give all of these people freedom, which they never got. And good, genuine, nice people are going to be confused. Bad criminals and, uh, you know, like, uh, like actual murderers or whatever, they are going to have a field day now. They're just going to start stealing from people, beating up people, and just, they're going to do whatever the hell they want to. They're going to start preying on the innocent. And 
that's what happened and then they just just broke the wall down like people are people will try to run away from here like it's chaos he just he just plunged this whole city into chaos that's what he did he said that he's going to save them but no he didn't and from here onwards i i i i, I very much disagree with his methods from here onwards you know he could have as i said he could have just said that i have taken over so don't you dare do anything you know unless and until i order or something but like zahid as zahid said he doesn't want leaders so obviously like he wouldn't declare himself to be a leader because he is opposed to the thing called leaders so obviously he was going to do something like this so from here onwards yeah i disagree completely like you know his ideals are nice to hear but in reality it, it wouldn't work it's it's just it's just a fantasy like you know like the way the things he says it's it sounds nice to hear but in reality it won't work like that and uh, i feel like he himself knows that that's why he said like i'm going to break down the old to bring up a new world so yeah like this is the problem with him and uh, i feel like from here onwards i'll be disagreeing with him but up until this taking down the earth queen was something i guess that was needed to be done but like you know like announcing that everyone is free no that was not the way he, he just plunged the world like you know the, the whole place into chaos and this is a mess now and not only that like you know like uh, the lava bender he just destroyed the wall and everyone's just going crazy now and all right so outside uh, not outside but in the cells they're still trying to you know like mark was trying to get out and it's like bowling you can do it come on bowling uses metal bending and we thought Bolin was able to do it, but unfortunately, it was just Zahir opening the cells. <laughs> Bolin was like, oh, did I finally do it? It's not only my cell, but everyone's cell open. Look at me. And then Zahir comes in and Zahir is like, yeah, you're free. <laughs> he says that I have something that I want you to tell to Korra. And you guys will send that message. I don't know what that message is, but we'll see. All right, uh, in the sand, uh, the, you know, the, the sail thing, the boat sail, sand sailor or whatever you call it, is ready. They r get out of that place, the shark, the, the sand shark or whatever, they try to gobble them down. But yeah, they're able to run away. Korra in the end uses his her fire bending to kind of give them a boost and <laughs> the shark will probably not come anymore. And they were able to get out of that situation. They come in front of that, that, that place where they were, that oasis or whatever and sell their sand sailors and the captain and the captain is a pirate isn't he you know like he has like a hook he's like i wonder if this guy knew like the like, you know suyin kind of talked about a pirate maybe suyin knows him or something i don't know it wouldn't surprise me if this guy actually end up ended up being suyin's you know like acquaintance anyways uh you know, that's not the point here he he's like all right like you know like i guess you know like it's all above my pay grade you know like, i'm not doing stuff like this anymore <laughs> you can go and then they see a dragon and they're like yeah we we, we really need a drink <laughs> okay and then we get into the tavern um lin is there lin is fuming because cora left him <laughs> don Ruck is there and zuko it's nice to see Zuko again. Uh, we did sort of see him before, but it's nice to properly see Zuko and Korra interact. And Zuko's like, oh, like I've met you before, if you remember. And Korra explains the situation, like everything's going to go in. It's going to become, like, you know, just fill, it's going to start, chaos is going to start now. And uh, she talks about Zaheer and John Rock is right. Yeah, the Earth Queen is down and everything's going crazy. That's where it ends. So that's it. That was this episode. Oh boy, a lot of things happened here. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll check them out. And that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you guys next week with two more episodes of The Legend of Korra. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.